Hey, everyone. Here we go. I'm Gideon, the CEO of Eyesight Technologies. We're going to talk about deep learning vision technology. And that's what we do. When we talk about uh, computer vision or deep learning, we talk about embedded computer vision, i.e., edge devices bringing very sophisticated algorithms. Can you hear me OK? Uh, to very low, pro pro low processing power devices. Everything we do is aimed at off-the-shelf silicon uh, processors, ARM processors that cost small dollars and not GPU, cloud computing, uh, although we do something very, very complex, and I'll explain. Uh, from a numbers point of view, it's coming, it's here. Uh, 20 billion, 30 billion devices uh, by 2020 that need intelligent vision. Auto uh, cars, IoT devices, security cameras, phones, face recognition, many different things embedded on the device, not in the cloud. Now, embedded can be like my iPhone 10, a uh, custom silicon that does your face recognition. It can be like an Immobileye 32 core custom silicon, very expensive, cheap, or it can be uh, taking a little bit of the processing power that is already available in all of these devices. And this is what we do. We pioneered methods of fusing uh, vision technology, and it, uh, we build very small neural networks that all fuse together to very high level of accuracy. For market's point of view, our main focus is automotive inside the car. Regulation is bringing in-car monitoring, driver monitoring, occupancy detection, posture from 2020. Cars will have it from a regulative point of view. So NCAP published this paper. We are already working with OEMs and T1 and aftermarket customers. I, I will mention uh, some. The second area, both actually viewer analytic and IoT is where we also doing a lot of work. Just uh, launched some products with Sony, with NTT Docomo and others, where they use our technology to really understand the demographics in the home, understand motion, understand gestures, understanding faces. And again, we do everything locally on the device, nothing in the cloud, nothing is stored, which is very, very important. It's kind of a one platform system that we provide our customers. So the benefits, really hard to do. You know, this kind of very heavy lifting uh, processing that usually needs graphical GPUs, expensive NVIDIA systems. Why do we make so much effort to bring it down to the, to the edge? One is privacy. Uh, we are not into sending information. We, know all, we all know that Alexa, Google Home, everything listens to us. Siri listens to us. Uh, we, don't, we don't share anything. Everything is real-time and discarded. No images anywhere. So fully private. Secondly, zero latency. We work at very high frame rate. We're talking about 20 milliseconds per frame. So real-time. Everything we'll do, I know I'm being a bit technical, but it's important. Um, is zero latency. And thirdly, no need for connectivity. If you want to see the pupil dilation of a bus driver to know if he's under the influence of alcohol or drugs, you need high-resolution camera. If you send high-resolution 30 frames every second to the cloud, you need a pipe connected to every device. Impossible. Hence, we bring this kind of technology to the edge devices. For example, on a driver, we are running six, now it's seven neural networks on a single core ARM processor. That's the level of performance we are bringing in real time. So let's talk specifically about automotive, and then we'll talk a little bit about other areas. So in automotive, we are already in uh, major projects uh, with companies from Germany, Detroit, where the whole environment, understanding what's happening inside the car, from head, eyes, pupils, face recognition, gaze, oc uh, occupancy, posture for airbag deployment is becoming very important. Uh, in Korea, Japan, and China, it's becoming the law for buses and trucks initially to really understand the, from a safety point of view. Uh, and, and the drivers are, are simple. One, autonomous uh, driving, level three upwards, will must have the understanding of what's happening inside the car. If you go on YouTube, do Tesla and oranges, you'll see people explaining how to stick an orange 
inside this steering wheel to emulate uh, that you are actually alert, that you are holding the steering wheel. Because in the autopilot, you are pressing, I'm alert, I'm OK, I can, I can view the, the road. People don't want to do that, and then they crash into a fire engine like there was recently. OK, so there's a leg legislation coming in from level three upwards, understanding everything that is happening inside the car. Second, distracted driving. I'm sure all of us almost had an accident because of our mobile phone or other uh, reasons. Distracted driving is bad. Uh, in Korea, they put out the law because there were a few bus accidents recently that people died in. Uh, we are working with fleet management companies that want to bring this kind of capabilities to the car, to the trucks, uh, on top of the telematics. So really, if an incident happened, to understand what was the state of the driver. And if you see articles, the attention of, of the road into the infotainment is getting greater as the infotainment systems are getting more complex. So over there, we're actually bringing 3D uh, gesture, posture control, where we are working with LG and others to bring this technology into the car. A quick snapshot of a, a viewer of a, of, of a system. So what do we see here? Um, on the top right, you see 30. It's 30 frames per second, so very, very fast processing. Um, when you see it, you get an immediate interaction or immediate response. By the way, in the car, there's no viewer. This is just a viewer of our, one of our systems. From the top there, I don't have a, a, any laser here, but on the top there, you can see face recognition, age, and gender. We've learned from OEMs above 70. Bone structure is, the, is, is such that airbags are becoming very dangerous. They want to understand things like age and gender for mass, for, for Arabic deployment. We do then 3D reconstruction of the head. Okay? We do full eyelid gaze, pupils. Uh, you can see the, the zoom there, how we see even the center of the pupil, pupil dilation. We have neural network on each part of the face. Uh, highly accurate. I need to rush. So many people die. There's very, very strong drivers. And autonomous level three is becoming mandatory. Then we work with other areas. Traditionally, we came from the IoT space where we work with many, many vendors, bringing real understanding of what's happening in the home uh, in real time, on the device, nothing in the cloud, very, very private. And we're doing a lot of your analytics now, so we are working with some cable operators where they want to understand demographics for advertising. You know, advertising budgets are moving away from linear TV to uh, online, there's no cookies on, in TV. We can actually provide this kind of cookies for content recommendation and for uh, advertising. So we do both software and the camera modules. We have a strategic partnership with uh, a very large manufacturing company called JBL from the US. But really, our core, capita uh, core offering is our unique algorithms and, and products. So we are shipping in many uh, uh, products. Um, there was an announcement with Sony just the other day. Uh, there was an announcement with SEAT a few days ago about collaboration that we are building. We're about 50 people. We've been going for a while. We've raised to date $40 million. We're generating revenue. We already have 21 patents granted, I think, yeah, 21. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, if, if in the past we had to educate, today the pool is so strong from both automotive and connected home that it's all about execution now, growing the company to meet all the demand uh, that we are getting. So thank you very much, and I'm happy to meet after the, you know, in the break. Thank you.